it's not doom and gloom right now. It's not like the best. And I get, I get in arguments with, you know, a lot of friends of the family where it's like Super Bowl or bust. I've never bought into that. You know, being part of the coaching world, ball's got to bounce your way, man. That's just the way it is. You force nine fumbles, you only got one of them back in the Super Bowl. That That's crazy. Sometimes things just got to go your way. And, you know, the best thing about the NFL is there's always another season. That another season's right. It, it started already. And it started with them coming out and adjusted the salary cap. This is huge. Uh, the 2024 salary cap was increased by $30.6 million up to $255.4 million. Okay, now what does that mean? Big numbers, whatever, right? That's cap increase covers, and it's way more. They were expected at $20 million. Instead, it was $30 million. Nick Bosa's cap hit this upcoming year is $14.6 million. Javon Hargrave, $15.4 million. That cap increase covers both those players with a little bit of extra gravy on top. It's a 12% increase in one year. Now, there's different ways to look at this. One of them is to say, yeah, but everybody got that extra money, so it doesn't really benefit anybody. I would argue, no, that's not true. The 49ers were right up against the cap, and still are. The team with the most salary cap space in the NFL is the Washington Commanders. Adam Peters, he's got some money to spend. They have $96 million in cap space, okay? Now, the team with the least amount of cap space, let's go, let's use the 49ers. Let's just stick with what we got. The 49ers have $6 million cap space according to Spotrack, right? So if Niners have $6 million and the Washington Commanders have $96 million. Now, if you give all the teams an additional $10 million cap space on top of what they already have, who does that benefit more? Does it benefit the team that already had $96 million and they're going up to one hundred six, Or does it benefit the team that was at $6 million, now they go to sixteen? Whenever you're looking at percentages of budget and what you can spend or what you cannot spend, the answer should be easy. It benefits the team that was up against the cap much more so than the team that already had close to a $100 million cap space, if that makes sense. So I understand whatever you're in. There's always going to be people that try to bring this other like, oh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And I get it. And sometimes I'm that person, too. And so I understand that. Having said all that, this is huge for the 49ers. Because now, if you look at all the clickbait 49ers content creators, they went from cut Kyle Juszczyk, cut Trey Greenlaw, Trey Brandon Ayuk, uh, we don't need Kittle anymore, to how can we spend our extra cap money? You see what I'm saying? Like, it was funny to me in that. People were already jumping off the bridge, and it's going to happen. It's the same people every year, and props to them. I hope they get their clicks and their monies and all those things. That's a wonderful thing. But it's just like it's funny because the conversation on Ayuk, it's dissipated considerably after the cap news came out. And I think that this tells a story. The 49ers have been very forward-thinking with the way in which they view the cap. They backload all these deals especially after the COVID year when we saw the cap shrink a little bit. They kept signing guys, and they kept extending guys. All backloaded, void years, all those different things. And I think that the progressive thinking and the projecting of where the cap was going to go, and they were correct so far, you know, who knows what the future holds, right? According to Kyle Shanahan, we might not even be alive on Sunday. But I think that they got this right so far. And because of that, this quote-unquote Super Bowl window that a lot of people want to say, I think that it's wide freaking open. I, I really, really do. Um, and so, you know, this is great news for the 49ers. Really, really is. I, I don't think that they have to sacrifice any stud players at all. And you could do a couple, you know, extend a couple contracts. You could, you know, rework a couple deals. And free up even more space. And if you do want to sign Brandon Ayuk to long-term deals, free up more space. There, there's lots of options that are on the table. All positives. All positives. Um, now, um, even on top of that, I want to stick with the salary cap before I get to some more questions. 
The NFL also increased their performance pay, uh, base pay, by $1 million per club. So what's that mean? It was at $13 million. Now every single NFL team gets $14.1 million to spread across based on performance-based um, increases. So think Brock Purdy, right? Think Jordan Mason, Kevin Given, Spencer Burford, Diamador Lenore. Your, your guys that are on rookie, undrafted, you know, contracts that were drafted late that have performed, performed well, those guys get huge pay increases. And I think this is huge. I, mean, I wish the NFL would shift even more so to this. Um, because again, Brock Purdy's making eight hundred thousand dollars. Not that that's not a lot of money, but compared to other guys on the team, like Sam Darnold, his backup, who didn't play much this year, I think made four times, five times as much money as Purdy did. You, you see what I'm saying? So, shout out to those guys. I absolutely love that. Um, Isaiah Oliver, he got cut. Um, <laughs> the Wilkes tenure is done. D U N, and they cut the guy. That was his guy that he brought in, uh, quote, the best nickel in the NFL. That frees $2.4 million cap space. Um, and, you know, Isaiah Oliver, his, his tenure, he started a quarter and a half of game one. That was it. After that, special teams, and he'd go in when there were injuries. But even then, they phased him out completely. Ambry Thomas took his, his job. They kicked Demo inside. Ambry Thomas went super soft late in the playoffs. They booted him and brought... You know, Logan Ryan off the streets took both their jobs. So anyway, that's done. And, you know, I talked about Spotrack. There's lots of different sites and different people that, you know, project the salary cap and all that stuff. Here's three sites. And there are three different numbers for the 49ers cap space in 2024. Spotrack has the most at 6.1 million. Over the cap has us at negative 5 million. And then 49ers cap with Jay. He's awesome. Um, they have us at negative 1.1. Do a couple more restructures or cuts, and you're going to be just fine. The 49ers are in a pretty good spot. Um, I, I really do believe that. The 49ers Rush Podcast.